All right, welcome back, friends. Hope everyone's doing great. Here's the link. Oh, come on. Link, why aren't you working? There you go. Here's the link to today's um, Nearpod or Pear Deck. Never get these things right. Uh, for those of you guys that are concerned about grades, uh, I'm still wrapping up final inputting of grades, so don't sweat it. Um, I'll probably have everything wrapped up by about 3 p.m. today. Um, yeah, there's that. Okay, so welcome back. Today, students will be able to identify common river types and their properties. Uh, the do now says, finish this sentence. Water will always what? Today's mini lesson, we're going to talk about some river landscapes. And we're gonna have a virtual stream table exploration. So considering we're not together in person, doesn't mean we can't have a good time playing in the mud. Let's take a look at that goes. Welcome, Jaden. A lot of people are joining now. Welcome, Sarah. Welcome, Ashley. Everyone, please join in on the Pear Deck. Again, today, students will be able to identify common river types and their properties. And the do now says, finish this sentence. Water will always what? And please include your name with the do now so I know who's typing what. Okay, since we got a good amount of people in here, uh, let's see. How about one more minute? Please make sure your name is on your entry so you can get full credit. I'm going to start sharing my screen so those of you guys. Uh, we came a little bit late and see what everybody else wrote. Okay, got about 25 seconds remaining. Three, two, okay, that's time. So uh, let's take a look at what people presented. So if you take a look at what I'm sharing, Ben says, water, it always is wet and it's essential to life. Water will always flow, that's true. Water will always run. Water always gets you in many ways, many forms. Water will always be an element. Water is not really an element. It's a compound, but you know what you mean. Water will always move or overflow. Water always travels. It's from north to south. So this is a common misconception. No offense to you, Jaden. But uh, water tends to move from uh, high elevation to low elevation. So water can travel to the north. It can go up on the map. It doesn't necessarily matter. Right? It's just going from high elevation to low. 
Water will always flow downhill. Water always moves. Water always flows downhill. All right, very good. So uh, let's take a look at some of the notes for today. Again, you don't have to copy this down because the notes have been added for you. I would, again, you can get them on the Google Classroom. I would just uh, jot down anything extra in your notebooks on the side. Uh, we're not doing any notebook checks in the next couple days, but just start. It's a good practice to, to get those down. So uh, what exactly is a watershed? Watershed is an area of land that can catch rain, snow, and can drain it into a, a seep or a marsh. Uh, sometimes they flow out into streams, rivers, lakes, or into the groundwater. Basically, it's a whole area where snow, rain, sleet, anything wet that falls out of the sky collects and eventually gets washed out to sea. Now, sandbars really aren't river landscapes, although they can be. Uh, when we generally think of, of sandbars, we're thinking about them just off the coast of, of the shore, and it's sand that just piles up. So now you could have this for a couple of reasons, but the one we're talking about in particular today is sandbars caused by rivers. So as water flows in a river, it's going to pick up little particles of sand, silt, and clay. And when it hits the larger body of water or the ocean, it's going to slow down. It's going to decrease in velocity. And then the uh, energy that's within that particle will dissipate and then they'll fall out. And as you can see, a bunch of boats here are just sitting on a uh, sandbar. It's a pile of sand just below the height of the water. And um, yeah, it's a home to many different creatures. It's ecosystem unto itself. And here's a look at some other sandbars found within a river system. So they, can, they really can be anywhere. Now, river valleys, and this will get us into our, our next unit when we start talking about glaciers, river valleys are cut in a V shape. So if you ever see that sharp V shape, you know it's got to be a river valley. And the way that I remember it is the word river has a V in it, so it should be a V shape, and valley is cut with a V. So you just think of it that way. Now let's say we have relatively flat land. Water is going to start flowing in a relatively flat pattern. Welcome guys that just joined. And as it flows in a flat way, it's going to try and find the, the lowest, the quickest point to get to the lowest area. And what that tends to be is that back and forth meandering. So meandering, you might have heard this in just typical dialogue. Meandering can mean to walk back and forth. Well, we find this a lot in rivers and in here. It's kind of like that serpentine back and forth curve. We have an oxbow lake. Oxbow lakes are sections of meandering curves that cut off. So how are these things constructed? So you can see in the bottom left, you see that brown water, that's, that's a current river. And then you can see all these oxbow lakes. This used to be a meander, a bend in the river, but that part ended up getting broken off. It got cut off from the mainstream. And then now they're just ponds, essentially, or small, small little lakes. Cool thing about these is that species of fish that may, might have been extinct in that larger river ecosystem may still be alive in these ponds. Pretty cool stuff. We'll talk more about how they're constructed tomorrow. So uh, here we have braided streams. Now, generally speaking, young streams are braided where they have these interweaving channels. And this is kind of what a view of these would look like from above where you have a large amount of water and it kind of spreads out as it moves on. And one of my favorites is a delta. So you get a large amount of rain, again, particles come out. Remember how we said it with a sandbar, those particles slow down and they, they drop off. Well, in this case, those particles are gonna drop off right at the mouth of the river. So the river has really two pieces of anatomy you need to be aware of. The head of the river, where it comes from, and the mouth of the river where it opens up. And in this case, you can see it opens up and it kind of fans out that delta shape. But I heard of Delta Airlines, right? Because the airplanes are, you know, triangle shape. Well, it's the same idea. There's your triangle shape, there's your delta. Okay, we're gonna hold off on the exit for a moment. 
So I want to bring you over to our Google Classroom. So we move to classwork. You can see we have River Landscape. So you have today's Google Slides. So you can go back over that in case you missed anything. And then you have today's assignment. So it says here, I will post a short video including all the video clips uh, later today. So I'm going to show you some video clips now. I'm going to have those recorded, and then I'll post either this video or I'll post them as a separate one so you, can go, you guys can go back over them. And this is what you do need to accomplish for today. Four very simple questions. After watching today's videos, answer the following questions. So I'm going to record your email address, so don't worry about writing your name. It says, what happened uh, to the bend on the outside of the river? Uh, let me change that. It says it's supposed to say, what happened to the bend on the inside of the river? what happened after the flood and imagine what would happen if the slope was increased so let's watch some of these videos So here they're showing you an illustration of a uh, river delta. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So he's just talking about the different models of stream tables. But this is how we set up a stream table. You fill it up with water on one side. And then you give it a bit of a tilt. Okay, so right off the bat, some observations. As water flows through, what's happening to the surrounding sediment? You can just drop it in the chat or you can call it out. I'll let it play a little more. What's happening to the sediment? Jamison said it's being picked up. That's true. What else? Just call it out, guys. Leela? Yeah, it's going from high elevation and a low elevation. What else? Look at that shape. Does that remind you of something? Don't be shy. Okay, so we're getting a V-shaped valley forming. What about the shape that we see here? This is almost like a triangle shape. If we were to go back into our notes for today, I'm gonna to pause this for a second. If we go back to our notes, we have our delta right. Very good, Frank. We've got, here we've got a uh, delta shape, a triangle shape. All right, cool. So that was one stream table demonstration. I wanna show you another one though. Now, you'll notice we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, construction vehicle toys sitting on the edges of the river. Notice that the river has bends to it. This bank is known as the outside of the elbow. That's on the outside of the elbow. That guy is on the outside of the elbow. 
The inside of the elbow would be here. Right now there's nothing. Same thing here, there's nothing. But I want you to watch two spots. I want you to watch one outside of the elbow and watch one inside elbow. Okay, so that guy was on the outside of the bend. Now you can see all this area over here is being eaten away. It's all falling into the drink. It's all falling into the water because it's on the outside of the elbow. Notice the inside of the elbow it's not getting smaller. Okay, in that case it did. But for the most part, so for the most part, you'll be seeing most erosion on the outsides of the elbows you can see all the trucks have fallen in whereas the inside of the elbows believe it or not are actually growing a little bit because the sediment that was removed here when that truck fell in gets dragged out slows down and it gets deposited here so this section is going to continue to grow where this section here is going to continue to get eaten away and if you just watch, you can see this water is growing over here. This part is getting wider as this part on the, on the inside is slowly getting larger. But this one's definitely getting eaten away at a much faster rate. Okay. So that is it for her videos. Oh, actually, one more thing. I do have a dam model here. I thought this was kind of cool. Um, so dams are man-made constructed devices, right? They're large piles of sand. Sometimes they're made out of concrete. Most of the time it's just clay and, and rocks. But if we take a look at what happens when we have quite a lot of water piled up behind one of these in a simulation, if the water is porous, meaning water can flow through it. I'm sorry, not the water. The, um, the dam is porous where water could flow through it. You'll start to see that the dam will start to basically dissolve into the water. It'll fall, it'll break, it'll erode away. And if you wait long enough, eventually, eventually, we're going to get a dam burst. So you can see that the whole thing just dropped loose. Yeah, so obviously catastrophic event, this is not something we want to happen with our, our geological engineering, um, but this is something that can happen. So this is why we're learning this. You know, part of this is about engineering, part of this is about learning about nature and the world that we live in. Um, yeah, but we're going to talk more about these topics today. Today was really just an introduction to some of them. Um, I'm going to edit that file because, like I said, uh, I had a typo in here. In fact, I'll edit it right now, right in front of you. I'm going to change this to say the inside. I just saw that. Okay, so good. It is edited now. I do want to send you back to today's exit slip. And the exit slip says um, there's two questions, and uh, you can pick one of these. How could pollution dumped in an isolated part of a watershed affect the health of large bodies of water far away? And your second option, number two, where do watersheds exist in New York? To pick one of the two, I want you to answer it. Please make sure you include your name. I am going to throw up another timer on here. Oops.
you got three minutes. All right. When the timer is up and your screen's locked, you guys are free to go. Otherwise, um, I'll be hanging out here. Right now, the time is 9.40. Uh, I will be here until uh, about 10.02. So once you answer that, you guys are free to go. All right, bye-bye. Take care, Danny. Good job today. Make sure you include your name on the exit slip so I know who's writing what. Bye, Belisa.